guys, welcome back to my channel. Smiley and sexy again. Shout out to all my friends out there in the United States. Jane and Flo, Alan Collins, Alan Ham, Tino Tino, Chicano on the go, Juicy Cook. To all my subscribers and viewers who truly support my channel. Good evening and good morning from the Philippines. Our topic for today is about thanks to before you move to the Philippines. Again, thanks that you should know before you move to the Philippines if you are expats. Okay? Let's start. If you're strongly considering moving to the Philippines, I will congratulate you. And Tagalog, binabati kita. Binabati kita in English, I congratulate you. Okay, this beautiful, complex, almost uniformly friendly nation is home to dozens of cultures, thousands of islands, and more than 100 million people. With beautiful beaches, wonderful wildlife, and a fantastic flair for food, you always have a new area of life in the Philippines to explore. Okay, number one, this land is many islands. The Philippines is an archipelago country made up to 7,641 islands of which around 2,000 are inhabited. So, if you enjoy exploring, you'll have a lifetime worth of new places to discover for yourself. Enjoy the breathtaking beauty of Palawan. Take in the stunning waterfalls and deserts, babes of Palawi, hike through mangrove forests and surf up a storm on Shargao Island, then swim with wild whale sharks off the coast of Cebu. And when you're done with that, there'll be thousand more, more islands to visit. Number two, prepare for heat and humidity. You know, Philippines is always hot. It's always hot. It's witty. I'm always witty, but as you can hear at the background, it's raining. It's hot and humid here all year around. January, including the December, of course, are the coldest month with an average temperature of 25.5 degrees Celsius, while May is the hottest. At 28.3 degrees Celsius on average, according to the Filipino government, but the mercury can soar much higher. In May, the temperature in the northern city of Tugigarao hit 40.3 degrees Celsius, that was last year, while the head index which calculate how it feels based on their temperature and humidity reached 53.3 degrees Celsius in the group one in the same month. That emphasizes just how overwhelming the humidity can be in its high throughout the year, with monthly average ranging from 71% in March to 85% and September. Number three, the healthcare system will be low average. There are many compelling reasons to move here, but the Philippines public health care system is not one of them. A 2018 study published in the Lancet and funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation ranked the Philippines healthcare 124th in the world out of 195. Oh my, oh my god, imagine. The, the Philippines placed at 124 out of 195. See? 
That, that's 95 spots behind the U.S. which plays 29th. The Philippines may have a higher ranking if it spent more than a measly 4.4% of it on healthcare, a lower percentage than struggling nations like Sudan and Yemen. As a result, around 30% of people in the country use private insurance. If you're thinking of moving to the Philippines, it's wise to think about medical cover when you're out there. We have partnered with Cigna for private medical insurance in the Philippines with four levels of annual cover to choose from an extra mood use for more for more flexibility. Cigna will sort you out with a plan that suits your needs. Start, real, uh, start building a customized plan with a free code to protect your most important assets, you and your family. Okay. Number four, set your punctuality to Filipino time. Yes, Filipinos always need. <laughs> For many of the people here, the clocks run on Philippine time, which is so, which is to say, whenever they want to arrive, put simply don't expect people to be on time. You are right, guys. Filipinos always late. We are just always wasting time for nothing. This phenomenon is not unique to the Philippines. There are at least a dozen other countries and cultures which have a relaxed approach to timelines. But the reason it exists on these islands is interesting. Filipino time seems to have originated with Spanish colonists who welded their lack of punctuality as a status symbol to show that they could break social rules without consequence. It's got to the point now where some Filipinos even set an event start time an hour earlier than it will actually begin just in case. So don't show yourself up by arriving on time. If in doubt, ask the organizer. Okay, <laughs> now you have an idea. Filipino always late. I like the American time. It's amazing. They are punctual people. The uh, number five you'll get you will get by the you get you get by with English but learn some Filipino. Again, number five you will get by with English but learn some Filipino anyway. The Philippines has two official language. Filipino and English. In fact, it's the country with the fourth most English speakers in the world. You will be able to converse easily with 64 million people in the country, which is about two-thirds of the population, but nevertheless, you should try to pick up some Filipino. English is used by the government, the media, in business but on the smaller island and even in your daily interaction with waiter groceries taxi drivers and other people who don't need English a few words of Filipino will make your life easier yeah you should learn how to speak Filipino language like salamat means thank you magandang umaga means good morning Kuya means big brother, uh, ate means big sister, okay? So you should learn Filipino language. If ever you want to ask, you can ask me. I will put on the descri uh, description box my contact information. So if ever you want to ask something, you can let me know. So, plus, when you realize in your country containing 175 languages and dialect 
learning one more won't seem like too much to us. Number six, food is flavorful and fresh here in the Philippines. Food here is so yummy and delicious. It's amazing. You may be nervous about your move, but if you taste, but know what's coming, they will be ridiculously excited. Yeah, food in the Philippines is always excited, especially the balot. <laughs> Exotic food. As soon as you physically can, try a carabao mango. Yes, it's so yummy. I love mango. This incredibly sweet fruit is named after the country's national national animal, a domesticated water buffalo, and it's delicious. It means in Tagalog, carabao, you know, the, a kind of animal used in a rice farm. In terms of cooked food, Filipino dish are typically hot, fresh, and meat-based. There are local specialties all over the country, but some meals are available nationwide. You will be inevitably try adobo, made by stewing chicken, pork, or both in sauces, vinegar, peppercorn, and bay leaves. Before hopefully moving on to kare kare, which combines oxtail with a rich peanut sauce, don't ignore the fermented seafood based on the side either. If you're feeling adventurous, see what you think of Camaro, a dish with salted crickets or just dive straight into the many delicious ways Filipino find to eat every part of the team. Gorge on the de decadent lechon, a whole spit roasted pig served with liver sauce or enjoy finely chopped pork face, liver, and brain in a sizzling dish called sisig. I love sisig. I love it. I miss it. I'm craving. If you're vegetarian, grab a deep fried banana roll called toron from the local market, then cycle through all the different fillings. Cheese, coconut, jackfruit, mango, sweet potato, and more to find your favorite. And when Christmas rolls around, pick up a bibinka from a roadside stall. These coconut rice cakes truly make it the most special time of the year. I love it also. I like bibinka during Christmas day. During Christmas or December, the month of December. But most of the day, it's available here. If I crave bibinka, I can have it in the market. It's so delicious. Okay, number seven, living costs are low. Life is cheap in the Philippines, particularly if you believe, uh, if you are earning money at US level. Rent, transport, and restaurant are gloriously inexpensive. Though you won't find the same kind of bargains when it comes to popular consumer items like jeans, stylus, trainers, and smart shoes. Okay, even the capital Manila, placed 78 in the Mercer's 21 cost of living survey, making it cheaper than 14 American cities. And it was the only Filipino city to make the list. Okay? If you're about to move to the Philippines, you probably need to convert some of your savings into Philippine pesos. However, it best to avoid using high street banks for this process. As you are usually have to pay high fees and you won't get the best exchange rate. That's why... We have done our research and compared all the major money transfer services on the market so you can choose the right one. Okay, check out our expert ratings and find the best money transfer provider today. You have to search that on your own through websites. Okay, you have if you have an internet you can access about this concern.
Number eight, Catholicism is king. This is a deeply religious country with 99.9% .9 people belonging to a faith a considerably higher proportion than the U.S. where 26% are unaffiliated unaffiliated according to Pew. 92% of the people in the Philippines identified as Christian with Catholicism alone accounting for 81% of Filipinos. This is part of the legacy of Spanish colonists. The Catholic Church influence in the country was shown during the bloodless people power revolution of 1986. I am not yet born. Okay, 1986, I am not yet born. I was born 1987, so I didn't know what's happening all around during this time. Okay, Manila Archbishop Jaime Sins appealed to protest President Ferdinand Marcos brought millions onto the street, leading to the dictator's peaceful overthrow and the restoration of democracy. Okay. Number nine, the country recently gained independence from the U.S. Again, number nine, the country recently gained independence from the U.S. In global history turns 1946, wasn't that long ago and that's what when the philippines gained independence from the american rule before that filipinos had to endure hundreds of years of spanish imperialism until the u.s took over following the 1898 spanish american war filipino started an armed struggle for independence against their new colonist rulers leading to the three-year-long philippines american war in which at least two hundred thousand filipino civilian was died <laughs> japan occupied the philippines during the second world war Resulting in the deaths of at least 500,000 Filipino, the U.S. liberated the country near the end of the war before signing the Treaty of Manila to recognize the Philippines' independence. It's June 12. The Independence Day in the Philippines is June 12. Independence Day in the U.S. July 4, which is my birthday. Number 10, Filipinos love the U.S. and I love the U.S. too. The good news, however, is that Filipinos feel extremely positive about the U.S. 80% of people in the Philippines have a favorable opinion of the U.S. according to the latest survey. Though this number has dropped since 2016, when Donald Trump and the Philippines autocratic ruler Rodrigo Duterte, our president, were both elected, it remains higher than any other country in the world apart from SRL in the U.S. itself. 11. We are now in 11. Even if the president is not always on board. Even if the president is not always on board. In 2016, the Philippines autocratic ruler Rodrigo Duterte, excuse me, told the U, uh, told the audience at Beijing Great Hall of the People in this venue, "I announce my separation from the United States." He said, he said later that Americans are loud, sometimes rowdy adding that their vocal cords were not adjust to civility. Duterte has made various attempts to distance himself from the U.S., which the Philippines has long considered a close ally to his country can remain neutral in any future U.S.-China conflict. In 2021, Duterte admitted in a speech at Clear Air Base that his friendly overtures to China 
were a part of the strategy designed to avoid a confrontation that would lead to something which we can hardly avoid at least not at this time number 12 book 30 drug war has killed tens of thousands the philippine president has repeatedly urged civilians and the police to kill drug addicts in 2016 he said there's three million drug addicts there are i'd be happy to slaughter them the 30 so-called war on drug has caused tens of thousands of extrajudicial civilian deaths according to united nations reports as a result the international criminal caused tens of thousands cost of thousand of extra ju as, as a result the international criminal court chief prosecutor has asked for authorization to start an investigation into crime against humanity under the 30 rules my god number 15 the lgbt people have very limited rights gay sex is illegal and lgbt people are allowed to serve in the military but that's about it there is no legal protection against violence or dis discrimination either which particularly affects transgender people who also are not allowed to change their legal gender or name President Duterte has made numerous contradictory statements about LGBT people and their rights. Okay, number 14, you don't have to think as much. Okay, take note, expats out there, you don't have to think as much. Forget everything you learned about tipping 20%. Most restaurants will include a 10% service fee in your final bill. And a 10% tip will also suffice in salons, spas, and other similar businesses. Round up your cab fare to the nearest 10 peso and, and then do the same at bars. In general, if you tip someone with a 20 or 50 peso bill equal to 40 cents or $1 respectively, they will receive it with surprise and gratitude. Number 15 volcanoes 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 there's a lot of volcanoes in the philippines the philippines sits on seismically active area of the world known as wing of fire meaning you may have you may have to deal with volcano related evacuation depending depending on where you live the philippines has 24 active volcanoes according to the government and one of them, our Taal Volcano, has erupted in both 2020 and 2021. The 2020 eruption led to 39 deaths with a six-week long, six long mass evacuation, avoiding more fatalities as entire villages were covered with ash fall. In 2021, another explosion released more than 14,000 tons of sulfur dioxide into the air. Number 16, earthquakes are common. Earthquakes are also a large part of life in the ring of fire, as the Philippine Islands lie on the top of five separate fault lines. As the time of writing, the past 30 days have seen 1,916 earthquakes okay number 17 basketball is huge here in the philippines we are a big fan of basketball the american influence on the philippines runs deep as shown by the nationwide obsession with basketball the philippine basketball association is the second oldest continuously running professional basketball league in the world behind the NBA and the country has the most Olympic wins of any Asian team. 
see it's often described as a religion NBA Philippines managed director Carlo Royce song okay if you're a big fan of basketball we are a big fan of basketball too number 18 no one uses the internet like Filipinos thank you go online a lot chances are you don't hold a candle to your new neighbor but then again nobody does people in the philippines spend globally unbeaten 10 hours and 56 minutes online every day on average according to the G digital 2021 global overview report <laughs> oh my god the u.s doesn't compare in fact its daily average of 7 hours and 11 minutes is only just above the world average. And this pattern repeats for social media usage as well. With people in the Philippines spending 4 hours and 15 minutes scrolling through posts every day. I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm busy with my plants. I am busy with my house. And instead... <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm very busy for my workout every day. Number 19. Get ready for karaoke. I like karaoke. Whether you're walking down the street, in the city center, or visiting a friend's place, you should prepare to be bombarded with karaoke. I like singing. But I like to sing, but music don't like me. That's true. Most Filipino homes own either a karaoke machine or a magic sing microphone which transform your tv into a karaoke screen just like me <laughs> millions of filipinos are in poverty but these machines fairly expensive price tags don't matter when there are nearly the near daily necessity karaoke is a go-to for everything from birthday celebrations and family night out to corporate, social, and community events. So, get ready to sing for your life and watch out for video, okay? Which will score you on your performance. <laughs> Sometimes I got 100 score, but it's all lies. Number 20, jeepneys are everywhere. Jeepney, the transportation, the famous or the common transportation in the Philippines like tricycle, jeepneys, buses, scooters. When you arrive at your new home, you will be you will see vehicles painted with psychedelic pattern and cartoon characters providing transport to around 18 people each. Welcome to the land of jeepneys, which is here in the Philippines. These vehicles were, which get their name from a portmanteau of jeep and jeepney, were born from the U.S. Army jeeps left behind at the end of the Second World War. There are now around 200,000 of these vehicles in the country, making them the most popular form of public transportation. Jump on board. Give the driver a mere 8 peso. 20 cents and ring a bell when you want to get off yes you said para okay kuya para means in english big brother stop their borrowed kitschy design have formed an important niche in filipino popular culture but the government is currently trying to phase them out in a plan which driver says is anti-poor. So ride one while you can. Number 21, the last but not the least, politeness permeates the public permanently. If you are called sir or mom, as soon as you land in the Philippines, don't worry. Practically all foreigners will receive this treatment, no matter their age, depending on where you come from in the U.S. This may be a shock or a welcome reminder of home and the politeness don't stop there. Younger people were respectfully called relatives 
and friends who are slightly older than them. Kuya and ate means big brother and big sister. Kuya and ate. It's very common. Which literally means brother and sisters, respectively. Seniors are re referred as po for the same reason. Means po for respect for the elderly. Okay? Young people also kneel down, take an elderly person hand and touch with their forehead and a show respect mano mano po like this that often occurs upon entering a home if you are elderly pregnant or have a disability you will have your own queue at banks restaurant and taxi queues that's all our topic for today so guys, don't forget to like and share my video. Just give a thumbs up if you like my topic for today. And keep sharing my video. Keep promoting my channel. So I can get more subscribers and viewers. And thank you for your support. I will put my information, my people account. If ever you want to, you know, to give... If ever you want to surprise me, I will put it down my PayPal account, my WhatsApp, my Skype, my Facebook. I will put it in the description. So, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. God bless you and, and happy weekends at the same time. Until next video, God bless you and good evening and good morning. From the Philippines it's Sunday morning in the Philippines it's Saturday evening there in the US wherever you are today or tonight God bless take good care I wish you all the best marami salamat means thank you so much God bless until next time smarty and sexy sign off God bless you guys. Bye-bye.